Welcome back to the Techmoto channel and the electronics playlist. Uh, now in the previous videos I promised that I would do two videos a week on electronic components and how they're used and so this is the first one this week and I have to say a huge thank you to everybody that's subscribed to the channel so far. Please do share this with colleagues or anybody else that might be interested um, and I will try and do as many components as I can as we go along. If you have any requests please put it in the comments section and I'll try and do a video on it but we will get slowly more and more complex as time goes on. So this component you've seen before in the previous two videos, it's a resistor. Um, I've used it, but I haven't really explained it very well. Um, and so I'm going to do a whole video on uh, different types of resistor, starting with this one. Uh, now, this is one of the most common types you're going to come across, especially in a school or if you're a hobbyist. Uh, it's a carbon film resistor. Now, you'll notice that there is a section in the middle, which is the actual resistor itself. And this is a lead resistor, which means that it's got two legs that go out of either side of it. Now, importantly, these legs, if they were straight, it's been well used, this resistor, if they were straight, are the same length. Now, what that means in electronics is that I can put it this way around or I can put it this way around. It doesn't make any difference which way round it is. It will still work in the same way. What does it do? It resists current and we use it for protecting LEDs and protecting other components. But there are also other ways of using it, such as dividing voltage, which I will go into in a future video about potential dividers. But for now, we're just going to look at it from a resistance perspective. Now, this resistor, as I said, is a carbon film. There's lots and lots of different types that look very much the same. They're made up in many different ways, from rings of carbon to a fine dust of carbon mixed with a, an insulator. And dependent on the quantity of carbon and insulator material will depend on the resistance of the device. Obviously, the more carbon that's in the resistor, the less resistance of the component, because carbon is a conductor. Now, the outside of this resistor is going to be either painted or coated in plastic, but you will notice that there are coloured bands on the resistor. Now, again, there will be an image on the screen so you can see it a little bit closer. Um, unfortunately, my camera doesn't zoom in that well, um, so I'll put a better image up on the screen. Now, I'm going to teach you how to read the uh, the combination of colours on a resistor casing to find out what value resistor it is, which is really important because if you put a resistor in series with an LED that's too powerful, the LED will not light up. If you put a resistor in to protect a component which isn't a high enough resistance, then that component will be at risk. Now, resistance is measured in ohms, and I will go through uh, Ohm's law in a future video, but it's spelled OHMS, that's the unit of resistance. Now, I know that this resistor here that I've got in my hands is a 330 ohm resistor. But what I want to do is I want to show you how to read the color code on the casing. Now, this resistor has uh, four bands on it. It's got a, uh, an orange band, an orange band, a brown band and a gold band. Now, if you get this the wrong way round, it will still work. But when you read the colors, you've got gold, brown, orange, orange, which might be confusing. Now, the rule of thumb is that if a resistor has a gold band or a silver band on it, which it will, that is the tolerance band, which we'll talk about in a minute. You put the tolerance band, the gold or silver band, to the right hand side, and then you read your colors off the resistor. So I do have orange, orange, brown. Now I'm going to throw a resistor color code up on the screen here. Um, and this resistor color code shows us how to work out what value resistor this is. So the way it works is the first color on the resistor relates to the first column, which is called the first band. Now, the color I've got here is orange. So on that band, orange is a three. So that gives us our first number, which is a three. The second one is orange again. So we look at the second band in the second column and that gives me a three. So orange, orange, three, three. Now this is where people make the mistake. The third band on here is the multiplier. It's how many zeros you're going to put on the end of it. Now I've got a brown line here, which you can see on the resistor color code relates to uh, 10 ohms or one zero put on the end of it. So I have three, three, one, zero, 300, and 30. Now, if I take another resistor, this one here, 
and uh, look for the gold band, put the gold band to the right hand side. I read this one as uh, orange, white, orange. So first band, orange is a three. Second band, white is a nine. So I've got three, nine. And then the third band is my multiplier, which is a thousand. So that's three zeros. So I've got three, nine, zero, zero, zero. So that's a 39,000 ohm resistor. And the important thing to realize is that these are pretty much the same size. So 330, 39,000. So you have to use those colors to get the right one that you need. Now, let's go back to the tolerance band, the gold band. Now, it might be a gold band, it might be a silver band, but these are cheap resistors, which means that it's an approximate value. It's not going to be exactly 39,000, and that's not going to be exactly 330 ohms. So it's got a gold band on it. Now, a gold band means that it's a 5% tolerance, which means it could be 5% out. If it was a silver band, it would be a 10% tolerance, which means it could be 10% out. So this one with the gold band is uh, 5%. Now, let's just see how that works. So I'm going to take a voltmeter and we're going to turn it on. If I touch the voltmeter together, in theory, there should be no resistance. Zero. Take them apart. There's just so much resistance that it gives me a one here. That's not a reading. That's just telling me that there's so much that it can't read it. We'll attach one end of the resistor to that pin and we'll attach the other end of the resistor to that pin. And you can see that we get a reading of 323. Now, oh, it's going up and down because I'm moving it around. Uh, but 323 is, you know, within tolerance. That's good enough for what I need to use it for. And what we've got to remember is that if you're using an LED and you need, you know, the rule of thumb, 50 ohms per volt, um, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference if you're 5 to 10 percent out. So that is the carbon film resistor. Um, you can put it either way around, slot it in your circuit, and it resists current across it. That's the first one. OK, so we're going to move on to the next one now. This one here is an LDR, or a light dependent resistor. Now, a light dependent resistor changes its resistance dependent on how much light is being cast onto the top face here. Now, let's have a go. Let's see if we can make it work. You'll notice that the legs are the same length. So rule of thumb is if they're the same length, it doesn't matter which way round they go. So let's attach it to my voltmeter and we'll see what value it is in the light that we have now. OK, so we're getting about 740, 750. Can you see it's changing? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light down on my camera rig. And you can see that the resistance is increasing. So there we go, 1,700, 1,000, down it goes, down it goes. So at the brightest I can get my light, I've got 778 ohms. Now, if I cover it up, it's complete resistance. All right, there's, there, there's nothing going through it. If I open it up, now it's resisting a little bit. And the brighter that light gets, if I bring it closer to the light, the lower the number becomes. Let's put it right in front of the light and see what we get. Yeah, we're getting close to no resistance. But that there is full resistance in front of the light, less resistance. And that's how that one works. OK, so now let's look at this one. This is a thermistor. Um, this one here uh, changes resistance dependent on the temperature that's being impacted upon it. Um, so if I take my uh, probes, you will have noticed again that the legs are the same length. So it doesn't matter which way around I put it. And we're going to attach it there like that. Now, I'm getting a one there. so. I'm going to go cycle through my voltmeter and see if I can get a reading. OK, so we've got 16.4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab hold of this with my fingers. But before I do that, I'm just going to rub my fingers together, make them nice and warm. And then I'm going to grab hold of it. Can you see that it's changing its resistance? Now, obviously, if there was a soldering iron attached to that, it would change dramatically. But if I let go of it, Let's blow on it, see if I can bring it back up. So you can see the resistance changing 
dependent on the temperature. Nice and simple. Okay, this last one is a variable resistor. And as I've said, the housing on these look very different with each different type, but usually there's some sort of way of turning the top of it to adjust the resistance of this. In a very similar way to the LDR and the thermistor, it basically just changes the resistance of the component, but instead of having something that's acting upon it, I'm acting upon it. Um, now you can attach this wheel to all sorts of different things so that if something turns mechanically it will set a different resistance or you can do it by hand. And usually these little ones have a little slot in the top so you can get a screwdriver to it so you can have something that's pretty small. Now variable resistors have three pins on the bottom of them but they're so small that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into my breadboard. I don't need a battery for this because I'm only measuring resistance. Now, making sure that my three pins go in different horizontal lines, I'm going to attach it to my breadboard. So I can turn this bit on the top and it's changing resistance, but we didn't need to prove that. Okay, so that's currently reading at 4.86 with a multiplier of 20K. And if I can do this while still holding these wires, I'm going to turn the variable resistor and you can see the resistance goes up when I turn it clockwise and when I turn it anti-clockwise it's incredibly difficult whilst holding 500 things it goes down so I can manually adjust the resistance of that component Okay, so that's it for this video. I have successfully bent all the legs of my various resistors. But what's important is that this one is cheap as chips. LDRs, you know, they're a little bit more expensive, but not hugely expensive. Thermistors can be quite expensive, but you're still looking at about 50p for one of those. It's another thermistor. These can be a pound um, or more. Um, you can buy really chunky metal ones, um, but again, I haven't damaged that one. Um, so that's it, that's resistors. Um, if you have any questions, please do throw them at me. At future videos, uh, I'll teach you how to put resistors together uh, in series and parallel. I'll teach you how to do the calculations and so on and so forth. But for now, that's just a brief introduction for how to identify your resistors, how to read the value on your carbon film resistors, and how to use some of these different types. Um, again, thanks for watching. Um, please do like and subscribe if you like the video, and I will be back with another one soon. Thank <laughs> you.